Hey, everybody. How's it going out there today? Hope everybody's having a great day. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm your host, Cash. This is Trucker News, or something like to say, hashtag Trucker News. Oh, yeah, let's get with it. Let's get right into the stories. I'll break down Trucker News for you real quick. I'm an illiterate truck driver. I'm going to try my best to read some news to you. That's how this works, because I know truckers hate what they hate more than anything is reading. And my my 17, 18 years, I don't know how long I've been doing this. I can tell you the one thing truckers hate the most, reading. Er, reading. So let's talk about it. First story of the day. Forgotten tools, oh, turn into deadly projectiles. Ooh, after they fall off a flatbed. Rough story, but we're going to start with that one. Drivers are largely unaware of reported Florida boycott polls show. We'll talk about that one. Fuel card fraud is rampant in 2023. Uh, sorry. Uh, Indiana DOT going to close uh, some rest stops for two years. Oh, my God. We we need more parking, and they're going to shut them down for two years. Iowa governor signs bill capping large liability for trucking companies at $5 million. We'll talk about that. Georgia is going to address the dangerous potholes on I-75. I'll believe it when I see it. And troopers hide in pin dot trucks as part of Operation Yellow Jacket. Woo wee. Hmm. And a truck driver was ordered to federal prison for smuggling 20 people locked inside a FedEx in quotations trailer. We'll get to that story. That's a good one. That'll be the opinion piece of the day. So let's get to it. Forgotten tools turn into deadly projectile after falling off the flatbed. Oh, man. That's just uh, that's just unfortunate. A woman is dead after a forgotten tool flew off a flatbed trailer and through the windshield of a car in Georgia. Lord have mercy. Can you even imagine? The accident happened on May 16th in Whitfield County, Georgia. The tool identified as a winch bar. Oh, my God. Can you imagine a winch bar coming through your windshield, son? It ain't going to be pretty. Uh, the winch bar fell off the semi-truck along I-75. A portion of the roadway was shut down for hours as medics provided treatment to the victim. The victim, Lynn Fleming, however, did not survive. This situation is very tragic and could have been so simply avoided, said Scott Smith with the Georgia State Patrol. The truck driver was not hurt in the incident, and it's unclear if any citations were issued. So just uh, a little PSA there, a little friendly reminder, you know, make sure you got you all your stuff off the back of your flatbed, uh, guys. It's uh, Man, that's rough. Leave the house and then catch a winch bar to the head, you know. Uh, it's a rough way to live your life. Drivers are largely unaware of the reported Florida boycott, the poll reveals. I wasn't aware of this one either until I read this story. An alleged trucker Florida boycott is not as widespread as mainstream media reports would lead you to believe. A poll of truck drivers has revealed last week Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the bill enforcing new penalties and restrictions for undocumented immigrants in the state. These new rules include requiring employers to make sure their potential employees are legally authorized to work in the U.S. I feel like that was already a law. Am I the only one that thought that was a law? Maybe I'm wrong. After the bill was signed, some Latino truckers took to social media to speak out against the new rules and call for a boycott of Florida in protest. Since then, reports of the trucker boycott of Florida have flooded the Internet, including one article that claimed empty grocery store shelves were a result of the protest. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't mean to go against your protest, but I did go to Florida a couple weeks ago. Uh, despite reports from the media, there seems to be little evidence that the boycott is actually taking place. Yeah, I had no no idea about this. Uh, according to the poll conducted by CDL Life on Wednesday, May 17th, most truckers didn't even know about the apparent protest. I know I sure didn't. Uh, next story, let's get into this one. Fuel card theft is rampant in 2023. Here are seven ways truckers can fight back. I don't know if I'll do all seven of them here, but we'll give you the rundown on it. Um, i tell you one of the best ways, in my opinion, I'd have the fraud is to not swipe your card at the truck stop if at all possible. And I will tell you a great way to not swipe a card at a, at a fuel pump 
is by using mud flap. Oh yeah, you know me. I love me some mud flap. If you're not a mud flap member, it's an app. It's links down there in the description. Go check them out. You, you don't swipe a card. It's all on an app. So come on with that. Utilize your card's provided security features. The problem is most fleet cards have very little security. Uh, don't swipe if you don't have to, a.k.a. mud flap, a.k.a. Uh, number three, be aware of telltale signs of scammers. Um, they're getting pretty good with those. Those are kind of hard to, to see. Choose the fuel pump closest to the store. Okay. Didn't think about that one. Be on the lookout for cameras. Uh, scammers are increasingly turning to small or hidden camera technology to steal your pen and other information without your knowledge. Wow. Use extra caution in high-risk locations. Yeah, if you're in West Memphis or St. Louis or, you know, a major city, I'd be very wary. Stay vigilant. Most fleet owners or owner operators are working long hours. Yes, they forget to monitor their financial statements, and uh, that could help them get away with it. Yeah, there you go, guys. Just a few things. Just a few things to be aware of. Let's get to this. Indiana DOT is going to close I-70 Welcome Center and two I-65 rest stops for two years. Indiana Department of Transportation announced some major facilities closing that will start next month as a part of a large project to add 1,100 new semi-truck parking spaces to facilities statewide. Salute on that, uh, Indiana. I know I give Indiana a lot of crap, but, you know, when you're coming in from Ohio, uh, there's that huge rest area on 70 now. When you come in from Ohio, uh, that would be I-70 westbound. Oh, they all should be like that. I love that thing. You can pull in there any time of night, and there's a parking spot for you. Guarantee you. Starting June 1st, Indiana DOT will close Clear Creek Welcome Center on I-70 and both north and southbound Lebanon rest areas on I-65. If I'm remembering correctly, those uh, Lebanon rest areas are pretty pretty bad. So I could see them closing them. If I'm not mistaken, those are like those old, outdated uh, rest areas where, like, the the spots aren't quite big enough for a semi truck. You know, it's just barely big enough. And then the entrance has just concrete that looks like you know you've dropped a, a carpet bomb on there. So, yeah, if they want to close those and make those better, salute. All facilities are closed for construction projects that are expected to take two years to complete. Wow. Uh, planned improvements for each facility are listed below. Here we go. Let's talk about it a little bit. Clear Creek Welcome Center, the I-70 eastbound mile marker 2 in Vigo County. So I guess that's coming in from Illinois. We'll have it. If you're going to redo it with an Indianapolis Motor Speedway theme, Visitors can interact with exhibits featuring IMS local and regional racing history. There you go. We're going to put a children's play area, adult recreation areas. Woo, I like the sound of that. Let's get some adult recreation down at the Pickle Park. Come on. Is you can do. Uh, walk through path. I like that little walking path. Dog park. There will be a total of 150 semi-truck parking spots. 150 truck parking spaces, trucker restroom facilities, improved vending, and tourism-related information. I like the sounds of all of that. I'll be honest with you. Uh, the Lebanon rest areas, mile marker 148 on the northbound, and I-65 southbound mile marker 149 in Boone County. Over there in Boone County. New facilities for semi-truck parking only. Uh, 75 semi-truck parking spaces at each facility. Wow. New trucker restrooms. Pretty interesting. The rest area and welcome center upgrades are part of Indiana DOT plan to spend over $600 million to improve 21 rest areas and welcome centers by the end of 2030. Wow. I kind of hope I'm retired by 2030, but I guess if I'm still out here, I'll enjoy it. Officials say that when these upgrades are completed, they are expected to add more than 1,100 additional parking spaces in the Indiana facility statewide. Wow, that's awesome. Way to go, Indiana. As much crap as I give you about your horrible roads, at least you're spending the money on parking. You know, you're not spending the money on the roads, but hey, if you're spending it on rest areas, I guess I can agree to some of that. 
Uh, the Iowa governor is going to sign a bail cap and liability for trucking companies at $5 million. So um, I guess there's not going to be any of those big, you know, what do they call those nuclear judgments up there? Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds signed in a law, a bill designed to help protect trucking companies from nuclear verdicts. Governor Reynolds signed Senate File 228 into law on Friday, May 12th. The new law is meant to protect trucking companies involved in crashes by capping the amount that victims can be awarded in court in non-economic damages for pain and suffering and emotional distress to $5 million with adjustments for inflation beginning in 2028. There you go. Um, that's really all you need to know in that one. Um, Georgia is going to address dangerous potholes on I-75. Ooh, I can't wait for that one. I was coming up I-75 the other day, and I-75 is pretty rough in some spots. Not horrible, but pretty rough in some spots. Georgia Department of Transportation will soon tackle serious pothole problems on Interstate 75. The rough stretch of road on I-75 between Starges Church Road exit 149 has left motorists and truckers concerned for their safety on both northbound and southbound sides. Repairs on the southbound side in February with an estimated completion both sides in the fall. This is the second time in recent years this stretch of roadway has required serious pothole repairs. Yeah, maybe fix it right instead of just patching potholes. Just, just thought. All right, let's get to this troopers in Pendot trucks as part of Operation Yellow Jacket. Uh, be careful in Pennsylvania. Looks like the DOT is going to be hiding out in construction vehicles. Going to going to pop you real good you speeding through that construction zone the pennsylvania department of transportation PennDOT, and the pennsylvania state police recently recently partnered for an enforcement campaign targeting unsafe driving in construction zones there you go pennsylvania state police and PennDOT released information on a five-week long campaign called operation yellow jacket that took place in the northeastern part of pennsylvania as a part of the operation psp troopers monitored traffic from PennDOT trucks and work zones uh, when a violation was spotted, a marked state patrol car unit was deployed to initiate a traffic stop. Get him! Uh, Operation Yellow Jacket yielded 136 traffic stops, resulting in 133 citations and 46 warnings. Operation Yellow Jacket has been conducted for the last five weeks in Lackawanna, Wayne, Pike, and Susquehanna counties. Trooper R. Dunmore, uh, section commander, said. Uh, PennDOT and PSP increase safety within work zones for construction workers and the monitoring uh, of the public. The operation have been run with active PennDOT staff construction zones on Interstate 81, 380, and 84, along with other local state highways. The initiative focused on speeding, tailgating, distracted driving behavior of motorists. Oh, I wish they would get more of that, let me tell you. I wish they would get more of that. I see more and more truckers out here holding that phone, you know, like here's a, here's a little PSA for you guys. If you're going to do it, at least hold the damn thing up here where you can see the road out of your peripheral because you guys that got it down here on your leg and you think you're all slick swerving all over the damn road and you're looking down every three seconds, everybody knows what you're doing. You're, you're, you're not being slick in the least. I'm telling you right now, everyone knows what you're doing. You know, you're, you're like this driving. You know, swerving all over the damn road, looking down every two seconds. You're, you're a jackass. Everybody knows, okay? I'm just going just gonna to tell you what I think. All right, let's get to the opinion piece of the day. If all that other was an opinion, I don't know what the hell it was. Truck driver ordered to federal prison for smuggling 20 people in a locked, a locked FedEx trailer. Now put that in quotes because it wasn't a real FedEx trailer. They've got slick. Let's talk about this story. Texas-based truck driver has been sentenced for attempting to smuggle humans in a locked trailer back in 2021. On May 13, 33-year-old Vince Ruiz III Mark, uh, was sentenced to 18 months in federal prison uh, to be immediately followed by two years of supervised release. U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, South District of Test. Texas has said Ruiz was arrested on October 5th, 2021, after driving a white Freightliner with two trailers marked FedEx ground on a Border Patrol checkpoint. Ooh, so he was slick. He got a set of doubles, made them made them look like a FedEx truck. I mean, not bad thought he put into it. 
Uh, during the inspection, a canine unit alerted uh, to one of the trailers. When officers inspected the trailer, they found 20 individuals, including a 16-year-old minor. Man, he only got 18 months for this. I find this very weird. Like, it's almost like they're they're just okay with it, you know? Which I've said that time and time again, you know? But like, if you want to affect what goes on the border, you, you, you got to do it with the politics, right? And by what I mean by that, let me be very clear by that. I mean, you need to elect me as king of this country. Officers found 15 grams of marijuana and five grams of cocaine. I mean, let's be honest about it. If you're going to lock 20 people in a trailer, you got to give them something to do, right? A little argument dust, you know, get them arguing and give them some weed to, you know, mellow that, mellow that out. I mean, I ain't going to tell you how to mix your uppers and downers, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, actually, I'm not saying anything about it. <laughs> oh, man. Call me on a coaching call, right? I'll, I'll talk more about it on a coaching call. All individuals in the trailer were determined to be in the U.S. illegally. Well, duh, you're not riding in the back of a dry van if you're here legally, right? Ruiz later told authorities that he drove to Edinburgh to pick up the trailer and return to Cyprus during the trip. He pulled over to the side of the road in a secluded area where the undocumented individuals were then loaded onto the trailer. At the hearing, the court hearing that in the event of an emergency or accident, the smuggled individuals would not have been able to extra, extricate themselves from inside of the trailer in discussing the factors impacting the sentence and the court remarking Ruiz, one of his commercial, oh, they were, uh, da, 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 Ruiz's use of his commercial driver's license as a special skill in committing the offense. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, they got him because he had a CDL. I'm going to say... If, if you're going to do something that illegal, why even do, why, why even have a CDL, right? Right. I mean, come on. Uh, but thanks for watching Trucker News, everybody. That was Trucker News. If you like hashtag Trucker News, uh, be sure to smash that like button. If you're not a subscriber, think about it. Just think about it. And if anybody's wondering, this floating bottle over here, it's magic. Put it in your tank. That's hot shot secret everyday treatment. Uh, links down below. Use my link to buy it from their website. Get yourself discounts and whatnot in there. Cheapest way to buy it that I know of. And uh, it'll really help out your fuel mileage in these tight times. It's very economical, so check it out. And until later, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to take care of each other out there. And remember, people are more important than trucking. Is anybody worried about fuel economy these days? I know I am. That's why I got me a channel partnership with hot shot secrets because i trust these guys they do all their engineering all their product testing right here in america this is diesel extreme this big two quart drug treats 160 gallons you're going to want to start off with this one because in my opinion that's going to clean those injectors better than anything else on the market it's going to get the water out of your fuel system and then after you're done running that one run that tank out come back get this right here everyday diesel treatment easy to measure bottle this treats 400 gallons. This little bottle does. It treats 400 gallons. Check it out. Best stuff on the market. I run it. I get great fuel economy. I appreciate them. Use the link in the description below. If you've got a CDL, you can get a 10% discount with those guys on their website, which makes it cheaper than pretty much anywhere else you're going to find it. Thank you.